In the last two videos, I showed you how to lock down data in a specific column so that users will either see an error when they attempt to query that column or you'll see masked results that have been hashed in some way. In this video, I'm going to pretend that the sensitive data that you want to protect is in certain rows of a table, not certain columns. And you can manage access to these rows using a row access policy. Okay, now for our example, we are going to use the user data table this time. And in this table, you can see that we have some hashed IDs with a name, phone number, maybe a segment that the marketing team uses. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to Tobias. So Tobias has access to this table. There is a policy tag on the email address. Um, but I'm going to limit Tobias's access so that he can only query the data in this table where the row has a certain hashed ID. So let's imagine that um, 111 ABC is a row. Let's Carol. Let's imagine that Tobias is allowed to see this row of data, but not others. So first thing I'm going to do is just verify that Tobias can actually see everything right now. I'm going to do that by having him query for hashed ID and when I run that, I should see all of them. So all nine rows in this table are returned. So then I'm going to apply the policy. And you apply a policy using a DDL statement. And you're going to open up a new window like you're writing a query. I'm going to copy and paste the syntax. And then we're just going to go through and modify this. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a policy name. I'm going to call this restrict Tobias and the table ID can be found by clicking on the table, going to details and copying it to the clipboard. I of course need to wrap it in back ticks and then you grant this policy to a specific principle and you have to say what type of principle. This principle is a user as opposed to a service account or a group. And the specific user we are talking about is Tobias at kin-williams.com. Last thing I'm going to do is grant access only to rows that meet the filter. And so this is going to be hashed ID column must be equal to 111 ABC. Let me see if that was right. 111 ABC. Yep, that's Carol's row. So now I'm just going to go ahead and run this DDL statement. And this will create the access policy for me. And you can see a message is returned. A new row access policy was created called restrict to bias. Now, if I click on the table and go back to schema, I can view my row access policies that I've created in this way. And so here you can see, there is the policy. And now let's make sure it worked. So I'm going to navigate back over to Tobias's window and run the same query again. This time, only that row was returned. And there is also a message that notifies Tobias that you do not have access to certain rows in this data set. Now for this use case, you might be thinking, why wouldn't I use an authorized view so that Tobias can only see certain rows in the underlying table? And the answer is, you can absolutely do that. An access policy is a little bit more technical to write because you have to use a DDL statement. And an authorized view will accomplish the same goal. The trade-off is that you're going to have to create one or the other for every single principle that you're granting access to. If you have, say, nine people sharing access to the data, that's kind of a lot of authorized views. And it's a little bit more simple and tidy to use a row access policy than to create a whole bunch of authorized views. Each one view is specifically for one user.
So that wraps up everything you need to know about controlling access to rows in a BigQuery table. Be sure to check the description. I've got a couple of links that I'll put in there that will give you the sample DDL statements that you can use to create, modify, and delete these policies as needed.